Today, I'm going to teach you how to create a Looney Tunes style intro effect in After Effects. Hey guys, it's Connor here from Quick Edits. Today, we're going to be looking at how to create a really cool Looney Tunes style intro effect in After Effects just by using a couple of shapes, a 3D camera, and an adjustment layer to add on a really cool green effect uh, the Looney Tunes cartoons are really famous for. Let's press play and see what we're going to be creating. And that's it there. Quite simple, guys. It doesn't take too long to create. Uh, we're just going to jump straight in now on a new project. Hopefully, you guys have already got some experience using After Effects, so you're not complete beginners. Uh, if not, I will try and explain it as much as possible for you guys to uh, follow on as well. Okay, so let's make a start. Let's make a new composition for now. New composition. And in your composition settings, we're going to leave it at 1080. And for now, we're going to change the duration, not from 1 minute 15, maybe just... 15 seconds will do for now. And I'm going to leave a background color to a dark gray. Press OK, and that's going to open up your new composition. OK, so the first thing we need to do is just start building in our circles here. If you look back to the original, you can see that these build in uh, all individually. So we need to make these individual as well. So let's uh, start by doing that. We're going to head up to our elliptical tool here. And from the center, to make sure that you can see the center, if you press the apostrophe key on your keyboard, that's going to give you your guides here. And then from the center, you can just click and hold and then by holding Command and Shift, you're going to be sizing up from the center, just like that. And that's the first size there. Okay. So we don't want a fill color. So we're going to head up to fill here and we're going to click on the word and we're going to select no fill. And that's that. Press OK. And with a stroke, we do want a stroke. So we're going to click on stroke and we're going to go to gradient. We will need this uh, radial gradient here. So we're going to click on that. Press OK, and with that then you can go into the colors and just pick the colors that you want. So having the darkest on this side and the lightest on this side, so let's unhappy these colors here, and you can press OK. If you go back to your selection tool, you'll get these two icons pop up. These are your uh, drag, drag icons for your gradient. You can just pull that across, and you can see how the gradient's working there. It's starting to get darker. Great, I'm going to leave that there for now. Now our next step is to actually start bringing more of these rings uh, into our scene now and actually filling up our comp, our comp here. So let's uh, select onto our first shape and we're going to press Command C and Command V. And that's going to duplicate it. And with our, if you press S on your keyboard with your scale tool, we can just size this one up just like that. And we're going to keep doing this until we get to the end as well. This time I'm going to select uh, both of these and I'm going to copy and paste these as well. Command Z, Command V, and using your scale tool, you can just scale these up, just like that, and maybe one more, just selecting the top one again, and scale that one up too, just like that. Okay, so I want to give the effect that well, these are 3D objects, and uh, they're casting shadows on each other. So to do that, um, I'm just going to select uh, maybe the top one first, and I'm going to go to our effects and presets over here, and I'm just going to type in drop shadow, and that's going to give us this one here, you can double click on that and with our uh, effects control over here, we're going to bring the opacity up to 100. We're going to lose the distance down to zero. I'm going to bring the softness up and you can see how that's starting to cast a shadow onto the one behind it, just like that. And really like that. Let's get, let's get rid of these uh, lines here. We just press uh, the apostrophe key as well and that's gone again. Now let's uh, duplicate uh, the drop shadow onto all of our rings. So up here you can select on the effect and press command C. And just through our rings, Command V, Command V, and just paste these all the way through. And you can see that's given us a nice gradient of shadows onto our rings. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to start uh, bringing our rings now into Z space. And that, but to do that, we need to turn these into a, a 3D layer, uh, all of them into 3D layers. So doing that, uh, all you have to do is select all of your layers right now, and then head over to this button here, this icon here, this is going to turn them all into 3D objects, just like that. And now we can just start pushing these uh, individual rings into Z space so our camera can swoop through uh, to create the, the, the final effect. So let's start with the smallest one. I'm just going to push this one down, just like that. So I'm not making it smaller, I'm just pushing it into Z space. And I'm just going to do this most of them, just like that maybe. Maybe a little bit more. Just like that. Next, just keep pushing them in. We'll have to resize them. So you can see if I go too far, it's going to go past it there. So we want to make sure we're above it. Let's, let's find that. Uh, the next one above. Just keep pushing them down. 
sometimes easier to see where the too far point is and then bring it back slightly just like that and then the top one just bring that in just like that so uh, the one we need to resize is uh, pretty much the, the final one there the last one so let's bring that back a little bit not too far so I'm just gonna size this one up as well so it's staying in the same position in Z space but we're just sizing it up to get this effect and now we can start to see our 3D uh, scene just by adding in a, a, a 3D camera. So to do that, we're going to right click on this uh, empty space here and we're going to go new camera. And with our window now, this is our 3D camera window and we're going to uh, leave the preset down to 50 millimeter and press OK. Now you've got your camera in your scene, you can press C on your keyboard and now you can actually start maneuvering your camera to see uh, our 3D uh, our scene here. And, and if you keep pressing C, you can go through your all your uh, camera uh, m movements here so this is our zoom so we can zoom out now to see what our scene is looking like and we just and you can see how we've got this funnel effect working now uh, so to get us back to our uh, original position uh, all we have to do is drop down our camera here and click reset and that's going to give us back to our position so I want to start animating our camera swooping out of this now so I'm going to go down to our transform and we're going to we're going to keyframe our position here so we gonna click down there and this is going to be our final position, so I'm going to move this over to maybe just towards the second there, make sure we're on a second. And then, so I'm going to change this Z space position here, I'm just scrubbing through this one on the end until I'm happy to where I am. And then, that looks fine there. And then once you press play on that, you can see how it's going to start pushing us through, swooping us through all the rings to our final position there. Let's play that one more time. Great. Uh, I don't like how we end so sharply, so it's just a complete stop. So what I want to do is highlight both of these uh, keyframes, and I'm going to press uh, our function key and uh, F9 at the same time, and that's going to give us ease in and ease out. So you can see the difference now once this renders out. It's just going to give us a nice st steady slow end to the to the animation. So let's press play, and you can see how that's working. The next thing I want to do is to add in our radial transitions here to build in the ring. So if you can see in the original uh, how I've got these building up uh, in a spiral. So we're going to recreate that now. So to do that, we're just going to focus on uh, one ring for now. So uh, we're going to use the uh, smallest one here. So I'm just going to press our solo key here. So we only see this one. And we're going to go, we're going to just erase that. I'm going to go into our transitions. We're going to drop this down and we're going to go click on radial wipe that's this one here so you can double click on that that's going to add it straight onto our shape layer and in your effects controls uh, under transition completion you can just see how that's working there so let's set it to a hundred percent and make sure we're set at the beginning on zero seconds and we're just going to click our stopwatch to make a keyframe now I want to be able to see our keyframe here, so once I'm on our layer, I'm going to press U, and that's going to drop down any keyframes that we've got going right now. And just a couple of frames later, maybe around there, I'm just going to set the 100 back to 0 so it builds in. So let's watch that, just like that, and I'm really pleased with that. Now I want this transition on all of our rings, so let's uh, desolo that, and let's add in the same effect onto all of our rings here. So we can do that just by clicking on our radial wipe, press Command C to copy it, and we can just start going through and pasting it onto all of our rings. Now, once we've done that, you can see if I press play now, they're all gonna start building in at the same time, but I, I like the offset that we've got uh, in the original here, how they've come in individually. So to do that, it's quite simple. All we're gonna do is select all of our rings here, press U on the keyboard, and you can see all of our keyframes with the transition here, and we're just gonna offset it slightly, so we're gonna go to the next one. Just gonna eyeball it for now, just pushing them over slightly to make like a stagger effect. And the final one, and then when you watch that then, they're going to build in individually just like that. Let's play that back. Great, I think they're a bit too fast, so the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to select uh, the last keyframe in all of them. I'm just going to hold shift so I can select them just like that, and I'm going to drag them across so they just last a little bit longer. Let's press play again. That's looking a lot better there. Just so that we can start playing back our, our, our preview here a little bit faster. Right now I'm set to full, so we're gonna bring that down to maybe a third so we can just see it a little bit faster. 
one more time. Okay, great. So once you're happy with that, now we can start adding some uh, motion to these uh, rings as well now. So that's uh, another really simple effect. Again, we're just going to select on all of our rings. And we're going to head over back over to our effects and presets. And this thing we're going to type in wiggle. And we're going to add on a position wiggle here. There's this one here. And because we're selected on all of them, we can double click on that. And it's going to add the effect onto all of our layers. And if you press play, you can see how these are starting to move. They're moving a little bit too much. So I'm just going to bring them down. Because we're selected on all of them, I can just bring down uh, our pixels here from 50, maybe down to maybe down to 10, see how that looks. And now we can press play, and they all should have been affected. And still a little bit too much, because we're still getting a little bit of black there. So I'm just going to bring it down maybe to 6. Let's watch that one more time. Okay, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm uh, happy to move on. So let's uh, let's start adding in our text now. So we want text to arrive just at the end of the animation here. So just around there, we're going to go up to our text tool. We're going to select, and we're going to click right in the middle there. And let's put in that all folks. Oops. Let's size that down. We can change our text settings over onto our right here and we're going to size that down leave that there center them up uh, maybe rotate so i can press w on my keyboard to rotate it uh, that looks pretty good so we want this to build in uh, as we come towards the end so we're going to animate uh, the text individually so let's close all these for now so we can see a little bit better and on your text we can drop that one down and we can click this little arrow here and that's to animate it and we can all of these are animatable, so let's click on the opacity and start animating uh, the build up. So once you see opacity down here, bring that down to zero. And we're going to bring down, drop down our uh, range selector here. We're going to be animating the start here, so let's scrub through to where we want the start to begin. Maybe around there as the rings are starting to build up. Keyframe there, and then move on, and then bring this back to 100. Let's play that through. And that's looking pretty good. Now our text is not a 3D object, so the camera doesn't affect it. But for this uh, example, we don't really need it as a 3D object. Of course, we could if we wanted to. Just click on this icon here, and then we can just start maneuvering this. Uh, we'd even rotate it upwards, maybe, uh, all the other way, just like that. But for now, we're going to leave it as a 2D object. And we're going to close our layer. And now, just to finish off uh, this project, we're going to add this really cool... Uh, grain effect that Looney Tunes is famous for and it's quite easy to do so once again you want to right click in your empty space and click new and then add on an adjustment layer just like that make sure it's on top and then head over back to your effects and presets and this time we're going to type in noise as this one here noise and grain and double click on that and this is where we can start adding in some noise so let's zoom in here oh maybe too much uh, let's bring our preview back to full and with the amount of grain, you want to take this quite slowly, not too much, maybe, yeah, maybe 12%. That's looking pretty good. And I just want to uh, uncheck use color noise. Right now we've got RGB noise in there. You can see the different colors there. And once you uncheck that, it's going to turn into a grayscale noise. And that should look pretty good there. Maybe a little bit too much. So let's bring this back down. Let's maybe try around 8%. Okay, and I'm really pleased with that. And there we go, guys. That's how we create a really cool uh, Looney Tunes style intro effect in After Effects just by using a couple of shapes and a 3D camera. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next and if you'd like to see any more uh, After Effects tutorials. Please drop a like, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.